my friends. Uh, for a minute there, I forgot that I wasn't going to do whispering. Uh, I did not have a particular idea for my scheduled video recording time. So I decided I'm going to do an impromptu uh, ramble video about how I was introduced to fishing. Before we get into what I like about fishing and my favorite fish, or my favorite ways to fish, I think it's probably prudent to talk about how I got uh, into fishing in the first place. Now, this will this will include some of my history uh, from getting from when I was a child to now, and I won't go into too much detail about that. If you do care about how I became who I am today, then I suggest you watch the uh, Rambo video entitled "Who I Am." Uh, it would be the video that. It all subscribers will, will see when they uh, click on my channel. At least it will be at the time of this video, who knows, maybe a year or two down the road, if my if and when my channel gets to that point, uh, it could be a different video, but that's another story. Either way, I will leave the link to that video in the description below as well. Well, bef like I said, when I start fishing, um, it would have been around the time I was 10 years old or so, I think. It was when I was uh, living in St. Louis. And it, again, harking back to that um, Rambo video I mentioned, uh, St. Louis was not a great place for me to live. Uh, and a lot of that had to do with, you know, how dangerous city is. It's one of the most dangerous cities in the world, let alone America. So, it wasn't a great time, but there are some positive things to come out of it. And I, like I said, I'm not going to bore you with details of why it was so bad. Again, I not only, um, not only discuss that in that video I mentioned, but I probably will discuss parts of that in a future video. We'll see. But, when I was, not long after we moved there, there was a dam there, I believe it was a dam, that uh, we decided to fish off for the first time. And the very first time I fished with my family, I... Caught, I hooked and reeled in an eight pound catfish. To this day, I have never caught a fish that large. To be fair, I don't really go after catfish nowadays, so it's really not uh, hard to understand why I have not really topped that feat. But the feeling of actually reeling in that fish is irreplaceable. I remember uh, having so much trouble just trying to hold my rod level and reeling it in. It took what seemed like forever. My mom kept calling to my dad who was on the other end of the river or lake wherever we were on. Uh, and I'm like, no, 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 I got this, mom, I got this. And it took me a while, but I eventually really, and that was just really cool. Since that day, I was hooked on fishing. Now, of course, if you fish or know anybody who fish, you know that that doesn't happen most days. In fact, most days you fish, you catch nothing, which I have learned quickly. Um, we didn't really go, that was the only time we fished in St. Louis, so it would be a few years down the road until I fished again. Um, me and my family eventually moved to Chicago, and this was the point where my father was making the most money he'd ever made. I think he made around 80000 which for us was incredible. It didn't last long, though, because within a year or two of that job, he lost his job due to, uh, from his point of view, due to politics over the day. It was, it was because uh, he knew too much. He knew more than his boss, and the boss fired him due to it. That would bite us in the butt again, but we'll get to that in a minute. To cope with, well, my father was starting to get a little upset and kind of depressed during this point, and a lot of that had to do with some crappy Illinois laws that were on the books. You see, in Illinois, at least at the time, and I think it's still like that to this day, according to testimony from my own friends. In Illinois, before you can even get unemployment benefits, you have to go through your retirement first. So my dad was going through the retirement I saved up, it's simply because that was the law for Illinois. It's a stupid law, but that is the way it is. So, during that time, we started fishing. Uh, to, I, he was unemployed for about a year. Keep in mind, this is like in 2013, 2014. For context, this was the point where the economy was absolutely stagnant. Like, there was a stimulus, now, now nowadays when you hear stimulus, you think, you know, stimulus checks because of COVID, but no. There was a stimulus package that the president at the time, um, 
uh, released and for anybody who doesn't, for anybody who knows econ economics, you know that stimulus packages don't work because what people do is they don't spend it, they hoard it. That is because they know that, okay, wonderful, we're getting money, but the job market is stagnant right now. No jobs are, no good jobs are uh, coming out. So therefore, I should hang on this money because that rain day is coming, and it came. Like the job that that, the job that that, jobs that need to feed a family were not available. Most of the jobs in the big job report, because during this time, jobs were actually coming in, like there was a big plus in jobs, but a lot of them were part-time. Not hardly a um, position to feed a family. So, during this year of complete stagnation, me and my dad would fish almost every day. It was easy to do because I was homeschooled, like I've said before. We, we would fish, there was this little lake that we, that we lived near, that we could walk to, you know, I mean, we could walk to it, and uh, we would fish there, and it was pretty fun, like, the weather was nice for the most part, and it was a pretty decent place with some decent people, um, well, no, I mean, we, we walked to it, but it wasn't a good idea, we mostly drove, anyway, sorry, I'm getting some, I'm just getting some memories mixed up, anyway, um, this was actually kind of unique because before this, we lived closer to a lake before that lost his job. You know, a, l a little farther away from the city. And I wanted to go fishing, but I never had time. And, and that's not too, that's not, that's not too hard to understand. Once you get to a decent paid job, all, all the time is sucked out, out of you. So we didn't go fishing when we had a lake, like, right next to us. But once we moved closer to the city, well, I don't know if it's closer or not. Like, I didn't have any good direct, good sense of direction, but it might have been close to the city. When Dad lost his job, we were surprisingly close to a lake, and we would fish almost every day. It was fun. I learned quickly that, um, that not every day you're going to catch a fish, and that was fine by me. I liked the, the, the being outside with nature, you know, playing with the worms to get them on the hook, you know, just trying out different lures. Uh, fishing is an experience to get closer to nature, closer to God, etc., etc. Just really great stuff. At some point, we got a boat. Now, I know you're thinking, so Horn, you bought a boat while you were unemployed and going through your, unemployment and going through your retirement money? Um, well, yes, but not what you're thinking. Like, if you're thinking boat as in, we well, can buy a Bass Pro? No, 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 no. On Craigslist, Dad found a boat for $50. Yep, that's right, five zero fifty dollars that a woman was using, uh, that a, a woman was using as a planter box. It was her late husband's, uh, boat, and she was using a planter box. So we were like, okay, let's go buy it. It was a relatively small boat, a relatively old boat, and a pretty heavy boat. Most boats nowadays are made out of fiberglass or aluminum, but this boat was made out of, uh, let's just say foam, in a way. Like, if you were to cut out the edges, like, there was a, there, there was a part of the boat that we still own, by the way, but there's a circle on the inner part that's cut out, and it's all foam. That's why it floated. According to this woman, it was a seawater boat, a, a saltwater boat, an ocean boat. It's for ocean fishing. So that explained the heavy weight and what it was made out of. So yeah, we bought this small boat that turned into our lake boat. And that is when we began boat fishing. At first, I really wasn't into it, because like the boat sh moves around a lot. We didn't have an engine, so we had to row everywhere. And as a young teen, rowing is difficult, especially when you're not very active. And if you watch, again, I don't want to plug my other video that, you know, the video you're not watching right now too much, but if, uh, in that video I discussed how I was sheltered, but not for the reason you're, but not for any reason that you might be thinking a homeschool or is sheltered. But anyway, I was not terribly active. Uh, before this, so rowing was a massive pain, really difficult. However, I learned to love it because I learned to love boat fishing because now you're not at the mercy of, at least in my eyes, you're not at the mercy of the fish coming to you. You could go to the fish, and in essence, that's what happened. Our fishing um, expeditions were more successful in boat than they were on shore. shore. When mom wanted to fish, because she not only does she get sea, uh, sea motion sickness, but she also is pretty inactive, like. She's not disabled, but she does not move around very well. But we tried getting her on the boat a couple of times, and while she liked it, she didn't really want to do it again. So when she wanted to fish with us, we would do it on the shore. But most of the time, it was just me and my dad uh, fishing. It was fun. Uh, 
there was an injury I had where it was pretty stupid. I remember doing it. I caught a small catfish. It ate my lure, and I was like, oh, you gotta be, not ate my lure, but you know, ate my worm. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I don't want this thing. So I tossed it in the air and slapped it into water as if I was spiking a volleyball. Now, the fish was fine, at least to my memory. I don't think it floated, so it was fine. But that, when I spiked it, its uh, dorsal fin jabbed me right in the hand. Actually, no, it was the left hand. Do I have a scar here? No, I don't. I didn't leave a scar. But yeah, it hurt for a while, and that was decided, you know what, best get, best to get your tetanus shot. And I did not long after that. I think like two weeks later. Um, I was overdue for tetanus shot. Uh, I don't want to get into details as to why I was, but again, it, it, it has to do with the reason I was sheltered. Well, the fishing really wasn't that unusual. We would go fishing uh, in the winter, ice fishing. My dad did not want to do it, but I did, because I was like, well, now we I don't have to row. We can literally just walk to the fish. And reluctantly, my dad got equipment, and we went ice fishing, which surprisingly, it sounds weird, guys, but ice fishing is a bit easier than boat fishing. The equipment, it, as long as you handle the elements. And this reminds me of another funny story. The very first day we went ice fishing, we went onto a lake where our friends, where some of my friends were, some of our fishing friends were, and we were the only ones out there without a uh, shanty. And one of our friends, who I think gets a little drunk, uh, said, Wow, you guys don't have a shanty and you guys aren't wearing specialized uh, clothes for ice fishing? Wow, you guys have brass balls. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. Now we don't have brass balls, this is what you do when you're poor. You, you know, deal with things that just aren't that important. You deal with things that don't really bother you now once you get through it. Like, things that bother some people don't bother me now uh, because, you know, you get used to it. I don't drive because I can't afford to drive. I bike everywhere. But that doesn't really bother me because I'm used to biking and, you know, I, I just do it. But for some people, if they had to start biking everywhere instead of driving, it would become, you know, a hassle. But that's how it was. At the time, um, it wasn't that bothersome. Like, some nights were incredibly uncomfortable. The coldest we ever did, which we probably shouldn't have because we caught... No, actually. No, we did We did pretty good. It was uncomfortable, but we caught a lot. It was one night when it, in the dead of winter, I think it was Janu early January, it was negative 13 with, like, 15 mile per hour wind. It was a miserable night, but we caught several fish, uh, bluegill, and I will discuss more fish after I'm done with my little story. But that really concludes all the highlights of um, that part of my life. Uh, we then, after Chicago, we moved down to Kansas City. Um, and this goes with my timeline, if you watch that video again. I, li I was raised in LA, moved to St. Louis, Chicago, Kansas City, and Chicago again, technically, before I go to college. And I do not discuss what happened after that second Chicago trip because that's none of anyone's business. But anyway, um, uh, KC, Kansas City, at first we didn't fish because, you know, our move there was rather ugly. Like, like both parents depressed and fine every night. Ugly. And why am I going into more details of what that entails? I don't really want to get into that now. So, we lived in a hotel... Uh, probably about three months, three to, three to four, no, maybe longer, I don't remember. Problem is, I remember how long we live in places, but when we have to live in hotels, which has happened numerous times, my, my memory gets fuzzy. But I, if I had about, about four months, I lived in a hotel. And after about two months, we decided to, you know what, we'll stuck here. My job's not very far away, I'm not spending that much time, in my dad's point of view, I'm not spending that much time at work, let's just go fishing. And we fished whenever we could. Dad would often get off work early, simply because the job he had didn't didn't have as many hours to work. This, uh, he, he got paid less than in in, in, uh, in Chicago, but that was fine because of the position. Actually, the, the position paid, from what I know, because my parents didn't tell me everything, the position he had at the time paid decently for the position due to his experience. So he would get off work early simply because there weren't that many hours to work, and we would go fishing. And the lake there in KC was uh, pretty decent. Uh, we got our boat out, and it was, at the time, we got a trolling motor, and this was awesome. Uh, we got a trolling motor yard sale for $25, and it worked really well. It was a little hard to control, but that wasn't a huge deal, as it got us from place to place, and significantly better than uh, rowing. 
Anyway, Kansas City had a place where I decided, where I grew a fondness for cr crayfish, or crawdad, however you want to say it. Crayfish allures. Basically, it's a crayfish gummy. Crayfish rubber lure that you put on a hook and you move as if it's a crayfish. And you move it, uh, you, when it hits the bottom, you jerk it as if it's a crayfish. And that's when I fell in love with them. Like, numerous fish bite into cray crayfish. Apparently, my dad grew up in the south, somewhat, and apparently called, they call them crawdads down there, but I know them as crayfish. So, they're the same thing if I ever intermix them. It's the same thing. Anyway, that was really the highlight. Like, there wasn't too much in that. We shortfished sometimes when my mom wanted to fish. I remember catching a massive bass, showing mom, she's like, wow, you can catch big fish? <laughs> it was just really fun. We also learned that you can catch crayfish and use them as live bait. Yeah, that was really cool. A lot of times I would have a big fish, you know, really, and at the other one I'd be doing this and catching crayfish to throw in the deep. A lot of times I'd catch big catfish, but um, it was fun for a while. Uh, like I said, Kansas City was a really ugly time. We moved into a house, and we weren't in there too long for Dad lost the job again. And if you, and as I've said before, we, we did not fish uh, during that time that, because he, during that time he was unemployed. Because his retirement depleted, so we had no, we literally could not afford to fish. Uh, and we were about a month away from going homeless in the dead of winter before Dad got a job in Chicago, which I call Chicago, but it was more close, it was closer to Aurora, which I think is the second largest city in, um, in Illinois. But I call it Chicago because that's how people know it. It was at the outskirts of Chicago. But yeah, my my fishing uh, life in Kansas City was uh, marred by um, the uh, rough circumstances that me and my family went through. Especially that move. That move to it and then move from it were just uncomfortable. And something I just do not want to go into right now. However, once we got into uh, our second stint in Chicago, our fishing became more sporadic. Like, my dad now was the kind of opposite. He was, like, things just not go well. He was now working more hours for less pay. And it was like, you know, it is what it is. Uh, always support us, and that's all that matters. We fish every once in a while, but hardly anything that really comes to mind. Um, the closest lake we have is about half an hour away. It wasn't like most other places where we were 10, 10 minutes or fewer away here, and we, it was about half a mile away, half, a, half an hour away, and we didn't always go fishing. We tried to, but it was hard. The, the truck, our, our only vehicle started to break down a little bit. Um, he lost he lost another job, and we had to find another one. It was just like you know, a mess in, in, in our same state of Chicago. Um, as for now, I want to go fishing again, but I'm having a lot of trouble finding time. Um, you're gonna hear it here first. I'm gonna be having a nephew visit me for a, a little while for for the summer. Thirteen years old. I don't know why of all people me. Maybe I go into a um, video. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments down below when we go into a video explaining the history of my nephew. It's kind of interesting. I don't go into nasty details, but there's a reason he's probably visiting me instead of most other people. But as is. Um, I don't see myself fishing regularly anytime soon unless I happen to join my college's fishing team. I might, I've been considering it, but I haven't gotten, I have not uh, decided whether I'm not going to do it. But that's the history of me fishing, so let's discuss why I like our fishing, what, why I like our fishing, my favorite fish, my favorite ways to fish. As you can tell, there's some marks here, a note, and a book here. It's fine. Look, it's kind of torn, and there's a, reason for, there's a reason for this. I did not buy this new. I found this at a yard sale, I think, in Kansas City, but I don't remember. And I remember it. I remember one time when we went to Kansas City uh, Bass Pro. I saw this book for thirty dollars. I was like, "That's incredible!" I got this for fifty cents. Like, now that's a deal and a half. So yeah, I use this. There's a lot of notes here. I I uh, I studied this inside out, and this is basically the. All, a lot of the inf information I use when fishing is from this book, and it seems to help a little bit. But fishing is so uh, fishing is such a feeble um, 
sport, you have to realize that most days, like, four out of five days, you don't catch nothing. And one of those four days, you will not even have a bite. So, you have to be ready for that. So, let's just... Oop, my bad. Sorry, friends. Let's just go through the book here. And see... And I'll discuss every fish that I can and have fished for. You have understanding the fish and their environment. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you guys want me to read this to you. Point the camera down and trace in the words I read. I've been thinking about doing a... I've been thinking about doing a... Uh, a, a video for that format, but I just haven't decided, you know, really haven't pulled the trigger. So let's just get to a page. Let's just get to the first fish. Right now, it's just discussing the environment, what kind of place you can fit fish, you know, lakes, salt water, rivers, etc. And now we do fishing equipment, how to use it. Not important because you guys don't want really to hear about, you know, what, what, what my favorite knot is, what my favorite type of rod is. You don't, I don't think you guys care about that. You know, how, how I cast. I've gotten some really good, like, I sidearm cast, and I've gotten really accurate with that. Fro with frogs. Frogs and crawdads are my favorite. Cra crayfish are my favorite lures. And I would discuss that in a minute. Now we discuss, um, like, radar. Radar sensor. Sensor, you guys don't care about that. Uh, okay, here we go. Basic game. Oh, no, no. We're not done yet. Basic game. Basic game fish techniques. Oh, this one. Okay, no, no, here we go. First, we're going to discuss the largemouth bass. See the bass? Yep, and here it is, right here. E eating a lure. Largemouth bass um, are probably the most popular game fish in America. Uh, when you hear a tournament is going on, it normally is for largemouth bass. Me and my dad, even me to this day, prefer to eat fish. And largemouth bass don't taste all that great. Um, people like them because they're hard fighters and they're, they're spectacular watching them snap out of the water. Uh, part of the reason why I like frogs is because you get to see, it's topwater fishing. And you get to see the fish, like, snap at the, uh, Lure, it's just so cool to see, like, you're reeling it, really, all of a sudden it's a splash and a clap, and it's just pulling you. And that's really fun to watch. Uh, but that's not the fish I do it with, but that's part of the reason why, um, uh, big game fish like largemouth bass. They're common, they're everywhere, and they're aggressive. Not to mention you watch them. They also grow relatively decent size, like, I've seen them go from 7 8 pounds, like, they can be big. And the mouths are huge, you stick your fist in a, in a large mouth. <laughs> As for me, they're not my favorite fish, they don't taste all that great, and it's like, com like, the big problem I have is that they're common. That's not fun. I'm not interested necessarily in, um, in the fish, it's, a uh, rarity itself, but the fact that it's so common, it, it's like, I don't care that much, and, and again, they don't taste great. But, of course, pretty much anything you have, it will eat. Here's a spinner here. Uh, spinners work. Spinners work on all kinds of fish. They work here because it doesn't really like a fish, but these things flash in the water and it mimics the, the flashing scales of a uh, of a minnow. Other fish here include hard plastics, whether it be poppers, spinners, um, plugs, and oh, what are these called again? Divers, I think. So, and frogs, of course. Frogs here. Frogs I use a lot, and I will discuss why later. Uh, like pretty much any and everything you have in a hard plastic, a um, a bass will like. And of course, you have your spoons. Like this book has a large section dedicated to it because of how um, incredible, incredibly diverse the diet of a um, bass is. Bass also like gummies such as uh, pop, uh, not pop as um, crayfish, worms, lizards, you name it, they like it. That's probably part. That's probably part of the reason why largemouth bass are so popular is because. Pretty much, you don't have to, like, learn uh, what they eat. Like, with any other fish, you have to learn what they eat. They don't eat everything. Bass are one of the ones where they just eat anything. And that makes them probably one of the best fish to go after, but also they're kind of finicky because they aren't great fish to fish for at, on the shore. And I think part of the reason is because a lot of them hang down deep. Another part of the reason is they're smart fish. Um, they don't attack... They, I've noticed they do not attack, they don't tend to attack frogs or any other top, top water lures. If you're on the shore, when you cast, they have to come to the shore. The fish know that 
Most animals don't do that. They tend to attack more likely when they go away from the shore. So when you're on a boat and you cast towards the shore, you bring them away from the shore. Then they attack because they know that that's, that's what their prey do. They don't go from the open to the shore. They do the opposite. Alright. Next we have the small mouth bass. And they do look very similar to large mouth bass. But there are two big differences. The first one is going to be the shape of the mouth. It's much smaller. Like, with a large mouth, you can stick an entire fist in there. With a small mouth, if you can get two fingers in there, that's a big fish. Uh, second thing is going to be the spots. Like, they tend to have darker spots and more pronounced uh, lines. But generally, you're going to be able to tell the difference by, the, by how their mouth hinges. Um, small mouth bass tend to, in many ways, are kind of the opposite, in, at least in my view, of large mouth bass, despite being, despite, you know, being, in essence, a speciation of the same fish. Um, one thing I've noticed is, one, they are a lot more rare, like, you can find large mouth bass anywhere, but small mouth bass are another thing entirely, and two, they're, they have a very picky diet, as opposed to large mouth bass, which will eat pretty much anything. A lot of the lures that work on large mouth just don't work on small mouth. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that their delicatessen of choice is the frog. And that's part of the reason why I started a maining, um, you know, my main lure are frogs, topwater frogs. And that's part of the, and the big reason to get a smallmouth. Smallmouth tend to, t tend to uh, share the shore with largemouth, but they prefer frogs. While largemouth prefer pretty much anything they put in their face, which most of the time is a fish. So. But some lures, my now like plugs here, do work for um, do work for um, lar uh, smallmouth bass, uh, and that also includes some spoons or spinners, as it were, and gummies such as the worm, and even some plugs. But not everything works. Like for instance, the spinners are not really a favorite. While you can use them, they're not really a favorite of a. Uh, of um, smallmouth bass, but when it comes to eating, they taste marginally better than largemouth. I like them because pound for pound, they fight harder than uh, your largemouth bass. They don't tend to get as big, but if you find a big one, you're in for a heck of a fight. There was a I remember one time. Part of the reason why I really like smallmouth bass is one time we were on a little creek. I would walk like way away. There was a creek that we were at that had like some kind of ruins near it. It was really bizarre. But there was a place where the water would hit rocks over and over again, and I threw my frog randomly, and a smallmouth bass popped up and grabbed it, and I caught, and I caught it. I actually caught three smallmouths that one day, and that was awesome. Um, but yeah, that's when I decided, you know what, I'm gonna main frog, this is great. All right. Next, we have the white bass and the striped bass. Um, I'm not sure why they're called bass. They're not really all that similar to largemouth and smallmouths, but that's what they're called. I think they're a little closer to perch. And here they are right here. Here is the... Uh, which one is it? Which one's which? Okay. Here's the white bass, and here's the striped bass. These are fun to catch because they can grow big, really big. They travel in schools. And they taste good, so there's not really any reason not to fish for them. The only reason is they, they're not always easy to find, and they're not really picky eaters per se, but they're when they want to eat is picky. You can find a school, catch them there, and they just ignore it. So, As for lures, uh, the book doesn't have a whole lot on it. Like, you can use um, plastic such as plugs and stuff. But one thing I like to use are gummy, uh, you know, plastic, soft plastic, um... Uh, minnow type things that are this long and come and come in different colors. One I've noticed they really like is a um, uh, what's it called? A uh, soft plastic minnow looking thing that uh, is brown and orange. And for some reason that seems to really work. At least in the lake I used to go to, um, it works. Now, if you made this far, it's probably worth mentioning. Uh, and I can give you more tips in a separate video if you guys want that. In dark lakes, it's best to use... This sounds counterproductive, I know. But in dark lakes, you want to use darker color lures. And in bright lakes, you want to use light color lures. I know that sounds really bizarre. And it does. Like, when I first heard that, 
from numerous people are like, that's so counterproductive, that makes no sense. But the reason it makes sense is because if something looks out of place, the fish don't want it. You want it to be vibrant, you want it to stand out. But you also don't want to stand out too much, or the fish will know not to bite it. Remember, if you're going after big fish, they've seen a thing or two. They know a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two, if you will. So if you're in a dark lake, dark muddy lake, use dark lures because it, it, it matches the environment. If you're in a clear lake, use bright lures. Uh, of course, the brightness not, does, not, uh, does not include the, the sparkle of like the spinners. Still only spinners if you can. But yeah, so it sounds kind of productive, but it works. Let's go on to the next. Next we have the um, sunfish. And these are called sunfish because they, um, they are very common when it's sunny. And you can barely catch them when it's cloudy. And the three main sunfish here are bluegill, which are the most common, probably the easiest fish to catch of all of these, the red, the red ear, and the pumpkin seed. <clears throat> um, when it comes to bluegill, if I were to accumulate all the fish I've caught, I'm going to guess combined, probably half the fish I've ever caught are bluegills. They are the easiest to find, easiest to catch, and taste pretty decent. The only problem is that you have to throw away, you have to throw back most of them because most, not only have to find big ones, you have to find big beefy ones, like ones that have swim a lot, like, like big ones that are thin, you won't get any meat. They have to be big, they have to be beefy. But if, they, if you can find a few of them, they make great and wonderful uh, fish strips, fish, you know, fish chunks, fish strips, deep, deep fried them taste wonderful. Um, blue, I have not noticed a taste in any of, in, taste difference in the three, but that's mostly because I have not caught a whole lot of the three. Um, bluegill are the most common. I've caught them in Chicago and Kansas City. Red ear, I've caught a couple of red ear in Kansas City, but nothing I ate. At least not there. No, I've eaten them, but I don't, I don't know the difference. I combined them with bluegill because I didn't think it was a difference. However, red ear, for some reason, were endangered where I was. The, the particular lake I was, there was a coal in it, so we didn't really go hunting for them. And then pumpkin speed, pumpkin seed, I've caught a few of them, but none of them have been big enough to eat, so I don't know how they taste. When it comes to catching these, these are very easy. Just put a bobber with a worm, and you catch, you catch them leisurely. If you are going to, if you were going to introduce somebody to fishing, and you were concerned they would give up easily because they can't catch anything, go look for bluegill. They are very easy to find, always by the shore, and if it's sunny, most days you'll be able to catch them, as long as the pressure is right. And again, I can go into these more. I can go into more detailed tips for you if you guys want. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you don't care about fishing tips per se. You just want to hear me ramble on about how much I like fishing, or maybe you do want to hear tips. Let me know in the comments. Next is the crappie. Some people call it crappie, but it's the crappie. And the black crap, the black crappie, and the white crappie. There's really no difference. Uh, just. I mean, every lake I've been to, I've seen both of them and an air mingle. So, I'm not, I'm just going to talk about them as if they're the same. Crappie are arguably my favorite fish overall. They're my favorite fish to eat, maybe my favorite fish to catch. They're, they are just as common, they're, they're pretty common, uh, or just as common as bluegill, and a little harder to fit, a little harder to find, but not too bad. Like you, you can shore fish them for sure. But they tend to be a little deeper, and in uh, in Chicago uh, trip two, in a Chicago circa two, um, they are very deep in some lakes. There was a lake that we um, used to fish at, I think called Shadow or something like that, um, where they were like the lake was deep, and they were sometimes found 20 feet plus deep. But that was fine when we have a boat. That doesn't matter. So. Um, crappie, uh, like, well first I've even used, uh, minnows as bait, live minnows, those, uh, probably 80% of the crappie I've picked, uh, I've caught and kept are off minnows, because nothing beats the actual minnows, and what you do is they stick in the back, and I will, uh, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail because that's not what you're interested in. <coughs> <clears throat> but if you want to go for lures, some of the ones you can use are small <coughs> plastics. They're like, they're like plugs, but are smaller. Small spinners. And flies, if you're interested in fly fishing. 
Uh, this reminds me of, a, uh, of probably my best fishing day ever. I think it was in 2014, 2015, when I was still in Chicago. No, no, it was still in Chicago when 2013. Or 2014. 2013, I'm going to say. In the winter, when we were, when we were uh, ice fishing, there was one day where we decided to go. <coughs> Me and my dad, of course. My, my mother never ice fished with us because she was worried about the ice cracking. But anyway. Um, <coughs> sorry, I have any allergy issues tonight. Um, we would go on to this lake, and we were there all day, and we ended up catching 90 fish. It was amazing. Uh, pretty much every 10 minutes, not every 10 minutes, every 5 minutes, we were reeling up a fish, and we had to measure it. Not all we kept, but most of them we did kept. That was an awesome day. It took me a while to cut, and I mean a while, to cut them. We were late for dinner and everything. Mom was getting, Mom was not happy. But once she saw a photo, the fish were like, oh, okay, I get it. It's like we couldn't stop, and we could have gone further, but we wanted to get home at some point. We couldn't sleep out on it on the ice. Although, with the high I had, I may have won. And when we were high, I mean high off fishing. I, I don't do drugs. That's just want to clarify. But yeah, um, <clears throat> that's part of the reason why I love crappie so much because of that memory. Like that was that was probably my favorite day fishing ever. It didn't matter. <clears throat> it didn't matter that it was below freezing. It was fun. Next is the yellow perch. These are an interesting fish. They taste really good, but I have never found a consistent way to actually find them. Pretty much all the fish I've caught, all the perch I've caught, were accidental. Every once in a while, we would be fish. Me and my dad would be fishing with something, whether it be crappie or whatever, and we would just catch these randomly. And when it was big enough, we catch them. Like, oh, that's a nice surprise. Um, I wish like they tasted so good. I wish we could have caught them more consistently. Like when we, when if. If we want bluegill or crappie or some other fish I'll mention later, we can we know where to go and we know what to use. Perch is one of those we just don't know. We have never really we have even to this day, I have never found a reliable way to, to find them. So if you ever want any tips on how to catch perch, I cannot offer you any because I I don't know them myself. Uh, as for what they like, the book doesn't book doesn't even give any indication of what they like. Um pretty much every time I caught them was on either a worm or a minnow, so live bait. Live bait them. Next is the catfish. Now there are numerous varieties of catfish, but pretty much all the ones I catch are the channel catfish right here on top. There's also the uh, flathead catfish, blue catfish, and white catfish. Now I've never caught a blue or white catfish, and that's because they are down south. I've never lived down that, down that far south. Though I have seen um, videos and photos that they can get massive, like huge fish, huge chungus of fish. But pretty much 99% of catfish I've caught are channel cats. My first fish ever I caught was a channel cat. Uh, they taste good, they taste a little muddy, but if you like that earthly tone, they're, they're good to catch. For a while, that when, I, when we first started fishing, catfish were the number one fish that me and my dad would, would fish for. Mainly because they're arguably the easiest big fish to catch. You just throw in, what, what we would do is we would catch, if we were to catch small bluegills that we couldn't eat, what I would do is I would keep them and kill them. Again, that's what fishermen do. Um, and then I would let them rot in the sun, put them on a hook, and throw them out. And the biggest catfish you can ever imagine would catch them. I can catch five to six pounders pretty easily with that method. Nothing works better than anything rotten. So, they would tell you, you know, get this stink bay, get this little, like, little gummy stuff. Not gummy, but, you know, like, mushy stuff they put on a hook. And throw them, like, stop all that. Grab some worms, grab, find some really small bluegill, kill them, cut them up. Let those pieces rot, put them on a hook, throw them out, you will catch a catfish really easily, as long as they're in a place where catfish are. And catfish tend to be pretty much anywhere. Like, you name it, they're so abundant, you'll pretty much catch them. The only place you won't catch them is like a small pond. Like, don't bother. But if it's a lake or, or even a river, you'll catch them. Um, I could go over what the book recommends, but there's no point. Just do what I said, you will catch them. Alright, what's next? I lost my page, that's not good to do live, so I'm professional. Alright, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yellow perch, catfish, here we go. Alright, just went over catfish, there's bullhead catfish, not going over that, same kind, same thing. Next is the walleye and sauger, which are essentially the same thing. The difference is that walleyes uh, have white eyes and saugers have a little white thing on their tips. Can you guys see it? 
can you guys see on the fins? Uh, yeah, it's not really rendering that well, but on my end, you see a small little white dot on their fins. That's how you can uh, determine a soccer. Walleye are prime pr are right now my favorite fish to catch. Not only are they rare, but they're the best tasting. The problem with walleye is that I know where they are, but they are the most finicky eaters. They're also damn smart. Um, we stop using live bait because they can taste the hook. And they are so fast, they can suck in the hook, taste it, and spit it out before we even know they got it. It's amazing how smart they are. But that makes them fun to catch, and how good they taste. I've caught only a handful in my, in my day. The biggest one I caught was a 28-inch sucker. That was so good to eat. Um, but yeah, the, the meat the meat is beautiful. They're a beautiful white fish. Like, you have two types of fish. You have red fish and white fish. And that depends on what their, what their muscles look like when you cut them. Salmon is a red fish, and you can tell when you look at it, it's pink texture when it's cooked. When it's cooked. A walleye now has a white fish. So, um, as for baits, a lot of people tend to use the, a lot of people seem like the best method is trolling with a plastic worm and spinner. And what is trolling? Well, trolling is a little different than most other um, ways to uh, fish. What happens is you set up your your rods and your rods and lures, put them in the water, and you use your trolling motor. That's what that's why it's called that for the trolling motor, and drag it across the water. Unlike catch and release, unlike uh, casting where you cast, reel in, and cast again, this lure is constantly in the water and will be there as long as you're moving. And that's the best way to uh, do for walleye. The reason is because walleyes move a lot, and they're not, and it's hard to predict. It can be very hard to predict where they are. That's also part of the reason why me and my dad have had not so much luck with them, because they can be hard to predict from day to day. Like they just move everywhere. They travel in schools, but not very large schools. Not like white bass, where when you pass them, you know you pass them. With walleyes, you don't always know you pass them, even with radar. Uh, but we just never. Um, caught them trolling. We've caught them with lures like this. And that was only a handful of times. Like, we want to catch more walleyes, but they are hard to find. Um, but once we get them there, it's so worth it. Part of the reason, I think part of the reason is the taste, part of the reason is the hunt. Like, once we get them, we just feel so satisfied. And last but not least, today we will talk about the Northern Pike and Musky. We have the pike here, and the muskie. The, uh, the muskie is a type of pike, but it's a much larger one. The muskies can grow big, like five feet plus long. I mean, we're talking about huge suckers. And the pike aren't that small either, as I think I've seen some grow up to four feet long. Um, pike were a fish that surprisingly taste good. Um, and I, me and my dad were both surprised by that. Um, and, that, and they are pretty much the reason why I started fishing frogs, because much like bass, they also hang by lily pads and snap at frogs. But they're unique because of their, their massive size. When they snap, they kind of flip over, and you see, you see tail move, and it slaps the water. It's like, you, if it's a pike, you know it's a pike. And they can be fighters, too. This is not surprising, given their size. As for lures, well, let's go find out. Now... Pike and muskie like similar things, but uh, I'll tell you in a minute why that's a little misleading. Like for instance, pike like spinners. Here. That's a common one. And of course, your usual um, baits. A little different uh, hard plastics, like plugs of course, but here we have, we have your uh, hinged um, plugs. And of course, your uh, spoons. Spoons work great for spoons work great for, um, uh, work great for pike. And of course, there are plastics. I'm not sure why the frog is in here, but yeah, in the book, it discusses frogs. And frogs, in my experience, tend to be the best way to fish, uh, for them. Near lily pads, in a large, rather large lake, cast them with your frog, you know, do your little, um, reel and stop, because if the frogs do, they will leap, and they will kind of stop at a lily pad, and they will go and stop. That's what frogs do. And that's the trick with lures, you want to mimic what you're, what you're going for. Like with crawdads, you, you, they don't move, you know, they don't move uh, consistently. They go up, and they fall down, go up, fall down, that's just how they move. That's the trick. But yeah, with pike, the problem is that once we decide that we want walleye, everything else kind of stopped. Like by the time we got good at pike, we just stopped. And we wanted to go for walleye. That was the main thing we wanted to do. 
Now, Musk, on the other hand, uh, me and my dad never bothered because Musk kind of has to have different equipment. Because it's one thing to fight a bat. Bats are strong fighters, but nothing compares to the Muskie. Um, if you look at any musky section in a fishing store, you'll notice that you are playing a different game when you go after musky. You have to have different lures, you have to have different rods. It's like, if you want to catch musky consistently, you have to have a whole new set of, um, of equipment. However, this does remind me of a story back in my, uh, first, uh, Circa 1, uh, uh, stay at Chicago. <clears throat> when me and my dad, one of the first days we were on our boat, we had our really cheap rods. Like, you know those rods that you get for a beginner fisherman? I still had mine a year later. And that's because we were poor. So, well, I had, I had. But anyway, my, um, one day we were fishing, I forgot what we were fishing for. But we, were, we, we, we caught some small bluegills that we kept alive because, like, what better way to use lures than what they actually eat? And that worked too well. Because one day, I was fishing around with it, and I was thinking, oh, great. I was thinking in my head, okay, it's a fish. Is it a bluegill? Not bluegill, sorry. Is it a, uh, is it a, is it a catfish? Uh, is it a bass? What is this? This is going to be fun. I hit it, and I was like, whoa. It just pulled, and it was like trying to rip me out of the boat. I was like, what is this? Dad and I were, Dad and I were excitedly uh, ecstatic. Like, I don't know what is this, but we were real in. And in a distance, because uh, my if I'm facing the boat, my lure is taking was taken to the uh, to the starboard side, not starboard, uh, the back of the boat. What is that? That's starboard. No, that's no starboard. This back starboard stern, I think. I don't remember. But it was taken to the back of the boat, and like 15 feet away from the boat, we see this big splash. I didn't, I didn't see the tail specifically, but we saw it's like it's big. It's bigger than a pike. Unfortunately, the line snapped and we lost it. However, it wouldn't be a few minutes later where Dad got his own and a much better rod, and he got us up to within five feet. Like I was really close to uh, to uh, netting it in, and we saw our tail. The spots matched. It was a musky. Unfortunately, the line snapped as it splashed, and I was like, "Oh, we we were we had two shots at big fish. We made awesome photos, but it it it, it just wasn't meant to be." And we would go back to that place numerous times and we can never repeat the same event. And it's rather unfortunate, but it did leave a great memory. Like, that was, that was the day I, we became a fisherman. Not casually, but as a, as a main hobby. Now that really concludes everything that I'm going to fish for in the book. Um, we could also talk about trout and salmon. Uh, salmon is in here too, I guess. The issue with that, however, is when you river fish, you have to have a whole new, not only a whole new set of equipment, but a whole new license. In Illinois specifically, uh, when I was fishing there, you had to have a license for four lakes and rivers. If you wanted to catch salmon or trout, you had to have a separate license for each, which I found bizarre. I don't remember if Missouri was like that, but Illinois was. And it's like, you know what, we have to pay for new licenses, which are way... It's, if I remember correctly, we're, we're a bit more expensive than regular licenses. We have new equipment because you, you're not going to find trout or salmon really in, in, consistently in the lake after river fish. And it's like, now we have a new, new technique. I don't want to do that. Not, we decide, you know what? We're all right. Well, we've kind of, not master, but we've, we've got to just, we, we have, we've been, we're comfortable enough with lake fishing. I don't want to get into river fishing. So we never did.
Well, that's all the time I have for today. I just want to thank you all very much for watching this video. Uh, please like and share this video if that does wonders for a small child like mine. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It doesn't take any time and it will help me immensely. And click that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I post. Also, leave down a comment down below. Also, leave a comment down below. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to say, like any improvements to the video, any recommendations. Do you guys like? Do you guys like the idea of um, me going over more advanced tips for fishing? Do you guys want me to tap on this book more? Like, just any comment is good because it, it helps the algorithm and it's my best, it's the, be the best way for me to get fe feedback from my viewers. So, just want to thank you all very much for watching. You are the absolute best. Have a wonderful day and God bless.